City of Valdosta cases. As Matt has mentioned earlier, the 2016-02, the Patel request has been removed this time. So Matt, we will jump straight into uh, CU 2016-03, the Windrush Land Company. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for a conditional use permit for a mini warehouse or self-storage facility in CC zoning. Um, the subject property is located at 3819 North Valdosta Road. It consists of about 3.59 acres. Um, this is almost out to the edge of the city limits near the Wilpacoochee River. It is a vacant tract of land directly behind the music funeral home. Um, comprehensive plan-wise, it is given two designations, both as neighborhood activity center and then a little portion of it, which is in the Wilpacoochee uh, River floodplain is designated Parks, Recreation, and Conservation. Um, we talked about this at length at the work session, but to give you a quick recap, back in 2011, this property was annexed and rezoned. It was given MXD zoning, which was one of our zoning districts at that time. Um, it included a master plan for a mixed use development. It consisted of commercial offices and residential. Um, that development did not get off the ground. Um, and then in 2014, the property owner came before you in city council, and they had the property rezoned from MXD to CC, which is community commercial. Um, at that time, it was discussed that a viable use of this property in the future might be a mini warehouse facility or many of the other multitudes allowed in CC zone. Uh, so here we are two years later. Uh, we have a prospective buyer for the property who wants to build a mini warehouse facility. Uh, Aerial-wise, you can see the existing funeral home. Um, the property is wooded but partially clear for those of you who've walked back up in there. Uh, a couple decades ago, or at least up until about 10 years ago, um, there was a mobile home park. Uh, it was on a well and septic system. It was still in Lowndes County. Um, and then the property changed hands. The mobile homes were removed. It has been sitting empty for some time. Directly behind it to the south and to the west um, is the entrance to Langdale Park. However, there is a couple privately owned parcels immediately adjacent to it. Um, some of them are also affected by the river floodplain. Um, in your packet is two versions of the site plan. This is the new one that was submitted earlier today. Um, but also in your packet is one of the older versions, which includes topographic information. Remember, we, as we talked about at the work session, that older site plan is really for reference for topo lines only. Um, as you see on this new one, which is the last page of your packet, you see a dashed line sort of meanders through that northern area. That is the FEMA 100-year floodplain. Um, the elevation of that is 133 feet above sea level. And by code, they've got to build something above that, two feet above FEMA elevation. Uh, which means the applicant is proposing to develop this into phases, uh, for these phases that are in the floodplain area, would only be developed uh, if or when uh, FEMA would allow the development to occur. There is a lengthy process uh, that involves engineers, hydrologic studies, and lots of other detail uh, that FEMA has to review and approve. Um, as mentioned in your packet, this is a request for about 61,000 square feet of any warehouse space. Um, and about half of those will be climate controlled units, which are on those two buildings in the interior. This revised site plan has a little more color on it than the one that we had and looked at at the work session, but it reflects the same layout. But with these colors, it shows a little better contrast of where the buildings are and the parking and the landscape. Um, back to the zoning map. Buffer yards are normally required between commercial and residential properties which in this case would be the property to the south and to the southwest. The buffer yard is not required between commercial zonings that are different. In this case, CC and CN. Um, so to translate, that means no buffer yard is required next to the funeral home. And also, we do not require a buffer yard against a conservation area because that in itself is usually a buffer. Um, one thing that's been reflected in the commentary and the staff report and also in the conditions is that this R21 property is heavily wooded, um, is also encumbered somewhat by the same river floodplain, um, particularly the one to the southwest, the Denzer property. However, the property directly to the south, which is owned by the Coleman family, 
um, is not quite so encumbered, but you see there's a sort of a piece in the middle um, in that pink area that is floodplain. Um, staff believes that if that were to be developed, um, it would need city utilities and therefore annexation, and it would probably receive a commercial zoning upon annexation just like this property in the penal home. In that case, there would be no buffer yard required anyway. Um, so with that, in terms of buffer yards, and it's reflected in the conditions, that in lieu of doing the buffer yards along the southern and southwestern borders, the applicant is proposing to put a very heavy buffer between them and the funeral home. And this, again, is where a buffer is not actually required, but it is something that they have worked out with that neighboring owner. Um, on the site plan, it lists the, the density of trees and vegetation. As a point of reference, a typical buffer yard between commercial and residential would be 20 feet wide, about half of the vegetation that you see listed here. So in other words, they're proposing the equivalent of a buffer yard. It's not quite 20 feet wide, but it is twice as dense as a commercial buffer yard. <coughs> so I wanted to highlight, uh, highlight that for you. Um, in your packet includes some supplemental standards we have for many warehouses. Those I think are listed on page seven. Um, they are in compliance with those as long as we have these conditions of approval. One of the things that staff was more concerned about is the visibility of these buildings from North Valdosta Road. We believe this buffer yard around the penal home, there was a very long way in buffering or shielding these buildings from view. However, the end caps of these buildings at the south end of the property and the very north end of the property that face North Valdosta Road, those need to be in compliance with Chapter 214 of our development regs, which basically means no middle siding on those facades. Um, they're proposing an office that will have a, a manager on site, a security control gate, um, and as we see stipulated in the conditions, the area would be probably brick or something other than metal, and then those end caps. Um, since the work session, I had emailed you a copy of the full packet, <coughs> some of the changes since then were this new site plan, and also some changes in a couple of the wordings of the conditions, um, and I'll get to those as we come to them. Um, property, as we talked about, is very irregularly shaped. Um, same issues for development that we faced in 2011 when we were looking at MXD. It is required to have shared access onto North Valdosta Road, which would be shared by or with the penal home. However, the applicant would be reconstructing that driveway entrance um, at their expense. However, the design would be granting the dominant path of ingress egress to the penal home. Um, utilities, the funeral home has its own well and septic, actually, excuse me, it's on city water, but with a septic field. Um, this development that's being proposed, unlike the MXD development, has a very, very low demand for water and sewer. In other words, one little bathroom in the <coughs> office, as opposed to that MXD development, which required a lot more. Um, they have options in order to accommodate that. <coughs> one is to do well with septic, the other is to tie into the city system. Um, water is not an issue uh, because access is nearby, but to run a sewer connector to the city system is probably cost prohibitive, and it is something they're still looking at. But as you see on the revised site plan, they are showing a separate drain field that is out near the front of the property, and I think this has already been reviewed by the health department. Um, with all of that, there's a, <coughs> a discussion and has been ongoing between the applicant and their representatives and the representatives of the nearby property, um, even right before the meeting. And uh, discussions have continued, and I'm sure all of these parties will be anxious to talk to you. But with that, staff, of course, has reviewed this against the conditional use review criteria, our comprehensive plan, and the listing of those criteria, and our responses to those are in your packet, as well as issues regarding the comprehensive plan. And so we're finding a consistent and recommending approval with a series of conditions. Uh, the first one is approval shall be granted for a self-storage mini warehouse facility. <coughs> it's generally depicted on the submitted site plan and subject to all the current supplemental development standards for such use. The facility shall utilize security data control access with limited hours of operation and an on-site manager. Number two, any outdoor storage area shall be for recreational vehicles only shall be limited to no more than 15,000 square feet of total area, 
and shall be located at least 200 feet from North Galatasaray Road. Number three, access to the site from North Galatasaray Road shall be provided in the form of a shared driveway and joint access easement with music funeral home. Intersection improvement shall be approved by Georgia DOT as applicable, and the main path of designed ingress egress shall be given to the funeral home. Number four, at the time of construction for each building in the development, the finished floor elevation of each building shall be at least 136 feet, or at an elevation two feet above FEMA's 100-year flood elevation for the property at the time of construction, whichever is greater. That is a change from what we could talk about at the work session. That was pointed out to me today by the engineering staff for that development uh, regarding in the floodplain areas, you have to be two feet above the FEMA requirement. That one foot language came from 2011 when we were looking at the MXD. And to continue with that condition, finished floor elevation for each building shall be approved by the city engineer. Development of building C through E and their surrounding area shall be subject to both city engineer and FEMA approval as applicable. Number five, all buildings shall be one story and buildings E through H, which are the ones adjacent to the FEMA home shall be limited to a maximum height of 10 feet. Number six, the eastward facing walls of buildings D and H, and both the eastern and northern walls of the office on the eastern side of building A, shall comply with the provisions of LDR section 214-7, in other words, no metal siding. Outdoor lighting shall be building mounted fixtures only, and directed away from neighboring properties. And that is similar to the supplemental standards for this kind of use. Number seven, all vehicular use areas shall be paved with materials acceptable to the city engineer. Number eight, in lieu of a required buffer yard along the southern and southwestern property lines, evergreen vegetation and fencing shall be required along the eastern property lines adjacent to the funeral home, as depicted on the submitted site plan. In lieu of the existing eight-foot wooden fence along the property line, the applicant may utilize a dark green finished color on the outside walls of buildings E through H facing the penal home property. The 10 foot building setback area along the southern property line shall remain vegetated in a natural undisturbed state that is consistent with the adjacent property. Existing mature trees in all these areas shall remain as approved by the city arborist. You notice in the packets I handed out to you this evening, there is a change in the middle of that number eight with the insertion of a new sentence. This is regarding the color of the wall facing the funeral home. In all these ongoing discussions, one is to forego the use of the existing fence that is already there, which is eight feet high and solid. Um, again, remember, fencing is not required. However, screening of the buildings uh, from view from the road is. This space is another property, not so much directly the right of way. However, staff's opinion, it is still somewhat visible from the right of way and that needs to be considered. Um, I understand from their discussions, they are with their substantial vegetation, they're proposing high growth evergreen vegetation. So in a couple years, the fence really becomes obsolete. I think that's why they're looking at foregoing the fence. Staff is fine with that as long as we have a decent looking wall in this first year or two. So a dark color such as dark green, um, I think would work and then the vegetation simply blend into that. So staff has added that to item number eight. And lastly, conditional use approval shall expire after three years from the date of approval if no plans for building permit have been submitted by that time. Again, a standard expiration date by the language. Um, lots of issues, there's lots of discussion, but I'll be glad to try and answer any further questions you might have. Just a few questions for myself, Matt. I on, on your, on your uh and conditional use review. Uh, what, what do you mean you say limited hours of operation? It's something the applicant is proposing. But I didn't want to get into specifying what those hours are. But if it's a, if it's a key punch gate, and I forget something at 11 o'clock at night, I can't go there. Right, and that's something the applicant can explain to you whether they can open. One of the concerns is, and overall from the community perspective, is this is a fairly isolated area. There's nothing around here except River Floodplain and even Langdale's Park. Um, it has low visibility from the road. 
The concern was that if there was not some type of controls for people coming in and out of the site, um, that some mischief could occur back in the site. So we like the idea that it's security gated access and some limitation is in terms of when it is being accessed um, by individuals. And I'll let the applicant you know, address the details of that further. Okay, and my, my next question will come from line item number six. Uh, just you, you've got you got the eastward facing walls of building D and H, eastern and northern walls of those have to have some type of non-metal surface. Is that is that what I'm understanding that to be? Correct. That's the northernmost <coughs> building and the building that's long and narrow that's directly across from the entrance. Okay. And then on line item number eight, you have in lieu of doing this, 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 you 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 say a green wall. So and that H is also included in 6. So are you saying the hard surface that's used in 6 needs to be used in 8? Okay, in number 6, it's the end caps of the building facing right. North Valdosta Road, not the funeral home. And in number 8, it is the wall facing the funeral home. Two different parts of the building. But, 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 am I reading this correct that saying you're okay with a metal use there? Agree with that. A green metal. But you're, but you're, I'm reading really that great. You're okay with that, that. On the part facing the funeral home, with the knowledge that a buffer will be growing up to hide it, the end caps of D and H have no buffer to hide them from North Valdosta Road, so they need to be a standard wall material that is not industrial looking. So uh, on, on the concept plan we have tonight, all the offices showing a brick facade. Are, are you, would you be an understanding that the end of that unit eight would have that same maybe brick facade? It could, but I'm an alternative material. I think it's fine as long as it complies with the development standards. Um, I think that's what the applicants are proposing. I know from looking at pictures of their other developments that they've done around the southeast, um, their offices have been bricked. Um, they look very nice, but the rest of the complex is nice but standard looking mini warehouse buildings. This is a more curiosity question, but uh, were other sites considered for this development in the area? I do not know. That's something the applicant can address for you, but they've made no mention of it to me. Any other questions for Sam? Okay, we'll move on to Okay, there be no public questions from the staff or staff on this uh, request. We will take folks in favor of this request. Please come forward this time. If you're here wishing to speak in favor of this request, please come forward and state your name and your address for the record. Please, sir. Good evening. My name is Nathan Brantley. I live at 701 North Patterson Street. And I just wanted to make a quick comment about the reason that the site plan was revised. It was revised to get a depiction of the buffer area surrounding the funeral home. And the reason it was revised was to just give an idea of how thick the vegetation was going to be in that area. I wanted to just make note of how thick it would be. It's a 15 foot buffer. And uh, there's, there's no fence required, but as, as of right now, there is an eight-foot privacy fence located along the perimeter of the funeral home property. Um, there's going to be an eight-foot Leland Cypress plant every eight feet. This will be irrigated. And we, we give estimates that the growth rate of the Leland Cypress in an irrigated situation is approximately 40 feet per year. So these trees will be pretty big and give pretty good cover relatively quickly. Additionally, there's going to be an oak or elm canopy tree planted every 50 years. That would be a larger tree. And then additionally, there's going to be 60 shrubs. Um, so, so we we worked with, um, or, or we, we, we've been in communication with the adjoining property owner uh, at the Music Field Hall. And we, we've certainly been concerned with, with um, being a good neighbor to them. And we want to make sure that we, we address any concerns that they, that they have. And we feel like we've done so in regards to this buffer. Um, additionally, in addition to the vegetation that we're going to be planting, um, the building height is also going to be a maximum of 10 feet. So pretty quickly, the trees will outgrow the height of the building. Additionally, there's an eight-foot dense already there. 
uh, the fuel home building is significantly higher than what uh, the self storage buildings will be. So it limits the visibility from North Boston Road as well. Uh, the second phase of the development, which is on the north end, and it's actually where building D is located, it might be kind of hard to see. But that phase will not be developed for approximately two years. So by that time, these trees will likely come significantly and then hopefully provide more of a buffer from not just the funeral home, but from more cost Road. So we feel like we have um, taken, taken a lot of steps to try to address a lot of concerns with joint property owners. Um, there's also a requirement that a brick facade be constructed on the two buildings down on the south end that face North Clydeust Road. And then additionally, on the building up on the north end, building D, which also faces North Clydeust Road. And then there's also been some concerns about the entrance. And we feel like we've addressed the concerns regarding the entrance and even, even improved what the entrance, uh, the functionality of the entrance. Um, I wanted to I've got some photos of what the brick facade would likely look like. These are some examples of the developers coming forward to the general contractor that's likely going to be doing this construction as, as constructed. And I was just wondering if I could pass them out and let y'all take a look at them. Is that, can I come up and pass them around? Hey, boy, while you're passing out, you can ask these questions. Uh, you, you said something about there's a 10 foot five fence that is existing. Right. Is it, are you proposing to keep that proxy fence? Well, it depends. It depends upon whether or not we can utilize the other options available, which is the green finish on the back of the buildings. So we're not we're not certain that that option will work because um, there's likely going to be a, a tenant that is very well may have their own color scheme, and that color option may clash with their color scheme. So if that's the case, then we would definitely have to keep the fence. But the idea is that within a couple of years, neither one would even really be necessary based on the fact that we're putting such a significant buffer in there and planting so many of these little side of the street. And keep in mind, they will, they will be here again, so it's less likely that they will just die. They'll, they'll, they'll be maintained. If that's every 10 feet of little soccer, is that what you said? Every 10 feet. They were 50 feet on a great down. That's right. It's, it's, it's double what would be required here, too. So, so uh, just a few more questions if you don't mind. You, you said that uh, Unit D was going to be down the road two years or so? Approximately. And, and that's because it's in the floodplain area? Is that, am I reading that correctly, Matt? Or it's, just, reading? it's a process they're going to have to go through FEMA with in order to get development approved. So it, building D is that northernmost right. building. It's it like unit C is about 40% of there. Is that, is that the part situation? of it is, and it also is part of E as well. But it's just a process with FEMA that takes a little while, and that's why they are not planning to build any of that anytime real soon. In, in my next question, I'll address you, then, but then Matt, maybe, but I'm just curious. I didn't see anything in the notes, Matt. And I know this probably is just overcautious, so excuse me if I am this way, but uh, it looks like one way in and two ways out on the entryway off of Pearl Foster Road. Is that way that you see it? One lane in and two out? Correct. It's mainly for the funeral home car uh, traffic, so right. they can get out to make a left turn or a right turn, so everyone's coming in the one lane. Okay. Uh, primarily going way? to the funeral home, and they would have to make a left turn That's correct. into this I, property. I, I, just, I just want to make sure it, the <laughs> engineers didn't have any hardware with that. I mean, it, it may all happen once every three months, someone trying to get into there with a funeral going on, and that's, that, that's almost <coughs> just. And it's already been reviewed by engineers, and I believe also DOT has already approved this design. That's great. Right. That's great. Uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry about I've captured Mr. Brandon's attention. Any, any questions for him from Commissioner? Yes, and if you would. Since I asked the question earlier, I'm just curious if you have considered other sides. No. Uh, this is the only one. And what is your timeline? Would you let me put it back 
so <clears throat> um, I appreciate you bringing this because this this definitely helps. Yeah, I mean, it, it helps us see what you're actually envisioning. Um, so, would you? How far along are you in design? In the design, and since this is so specific, uh, and some of the concern, like Matt was mentioning, is really how this is going to be viewed from Valdosta Road, not Valdosta Road. So, would you? Would you be willing to, to share more drawing? I'm curious. I would like to know how this is actually, how this would be perceived from the road, and how much of this would be actually visible. And I don't know, I, I don't want to interrupt you, but Selena, I mean, this is a significant road frontage here. It's got three well, stars. but this is not, this is a building that's actually under construction somewhere else, right? The, the yeah, yes, yeah, so that's an example of what the facade <clears throat> will look like, something close to that. But now keep in mind that it will be only for the areas so, where they're facing the right, front right. right? And so um, I right. would be curious to know how far along are you, have you actually done Massive stuff. Have you drawn this stuff and see what that would be like in the street? This is Clayton Milligan with Lovell Engineering. He, he's doing the design plan, so he may be more he may be more appropriate to answer that. Um, for the record, uh, my name is Clayton Milligan at 3998 3998 Air Road. <coughs> the civil engineer on the project representing Windrush. Uh, we have not done any massive studies or Really, the middle, middle building drawings have not been ordered yet, so we're really trying to you know, get, get the condition use permit in place first, and then we can start you know, moving down the, the design road. So that answers your question. So, I, Clayton, I will ask you a question too. It is, you've had a chance to calculate the green space within this development. Are we at 25%? I'm just yes, curious. we actually exceed the, now we exceed the 25% uh, green space on here. We have less than 75% pervious area. Okay. Frank, i got to ask this question to you again. Okay. The only because I just got through helping the sun boom and we were going into many stores at midnight. I'm just curious about the days of the hour of operation. Why would you choose to live in that? Uh, it's a, it's a, a, a safety a, matter, and then additionally, it's um, you know, part of it is to to get along with the neighbors. So, so, so the proposed hours of operation are from um, eight to six, and then there's also going to be a separate hours of operation, which would be for the gate access. So that so people the the, the office will be open a certain amount of time. Yeah, so what's your gate access hours? It's going to be until nine. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think that those are completely nailed down, but I think it's in that, in that general way. In Saturday and Sunday, I'm just curious. Um, I'm not certain how it might Pat, do you know? Okay. <coughs> Any other questions from Mr. Branch? Well, I just have one statement for a moment. Uh, Y'all both have been by that during, during the flood when the river's up, and I've seen water all the way up into the portico there at the uh, funeral home, and uh, that would concern me uh, if I had a, lock, a locker there and had the water coming up. I mean, you know, that's because, like I said, it's, it was quite a few feet above the the high water mark that they shot on here. So that's another consideration I'd like to make sure that y'all are aware of, uh, because uh, I've seen it up in just about into the funeral home twice. Like I said, that's more an observation than, than, than a question, just to make sure that you're aware of that situation. Any other questions for the presenter? Just out of curiosity, are you going to have security cameras or anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. So I, I, I'm, I'm curious about the limited hours of operation and what neighbors are going to be bothered is I, I don't see neighbors but if it's going to be security cameras I, I would strike that one well our, our main our main concern most of the most of the property around this lake is wooded area so our, obviously our main concern is the people so, so we, we want to make sure we don't disrupt them uh, we, we've got we've got to address that 
We've actually, the, the entrance has been designed in such a manner to actually benefit the funeral home more so than the, in, 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 in the way that the GNR next it. It, it, it actually shows preference to the funeral home. Um, and and we, we feel like we've, we've done a good job with the buffering. Um, we, we think that, that the use of a self storage facility is an appropriate use for um, community commercial. And, and a lot of the reason is, is we think it's improvement of what was there before. This property was purchased in 2006, and up until 2008, it was a mobile home park. And it was rezoned in 2014 to community commercial. And there's a, a, a long list of uses that are already permitted that do not require a conditional use permit, some of which include a convenience store, a fast food restaurant, uh, just general retail. Uh, Etc. Et so we, we feel like that, that this is a lower impact than what those uses would be. If there's going to be less traffic coming in and out of there than, than a fast food restaurant would be. Additionally, it's an odd shape of a parcel. So how do you really utilize this this parcel to the best of its benefit? And we think that, that a self storage facility can utilize the odd shape of the parcel. Um, it, it's relatively low uh, burden on utilities. Uh, there's no new facilities that have to be installed. It's going to be uh, just a, a one, one bathroom um, instead of tying to city water, and then there's going to be a septic system. So very, very minimal impact. Uh, we, we feel like it's... Um, so so you, this, this, the new development is going to be on this individual septic tank? I thought you said last week it's going to tie into the... That's something they've been looking at, and I think they've decided for cost purposes that it would be better to have a septic tank for their one bathroom but still utilize city water. I guess it's going to be all conflicted now, so. We've had discussions with the health department and based on the one bathroom, we thought it would be their requirements on site without, without the other station. Commissioners, any other questions for us? Oh, I've got one thing to, to ask in engineering. Um, 10.1, I did want to let everyone know, you already have the GDOT permits already been approved by Georgia DOT, and that's in place for the driveway you see. So that's been approved. The second thing I'd like to uh, request is, uh, for your consideration, is that um, we remove the condition number four. And the reason I ask that is the people regulations in the city flood are already in place. They basically state everything that's in here with the exception of the 136 elevation. So I've already, we've got a lot of engineering we've got to do, we've got a lot of submittals we have to submit to FEMA, to the city engineering department. All that still has to be approved, still has to be reviewed. And uh, I was in looking at it, there's other uses in CC that would be permitted without a conditional use permit. If we happen to be one of those uses, that 136 elevation would not be. Uh, you know, would not be without encumbered into other uses. So I don't, I, I don't see that the 136 being uh, specific to the use that they're requesting a conditional use permit for. It's more a general development requirement that's already addressed by the existing FEMA flood regulations and the existing city flood warnings. And we are the client that's well aware of the flood of 2009 and the the risk associated with the, the elevation that we end up at, but I would request that just in light of the fact that there's already regulations in place that will regulate how that's developed, that condition number four be removed, and then on um, condition number six. Like, why you I'm just, I'm just curious, like, building B, what do you think the finished floor elevation will be about this second? I wouldn't go bring it up. You don't want to draw it up. <laughs> building B? Yeah, I'm just curious. No. Building? Yeah. Building B, the one that goes across the back? Yes, sir. Just um, curious. It's probably going to be that particular building. I don't know if you've seen some of the self storage around town. It'll actually step. Stagger. It'll, it'll stagger. They want to figure out where that stagger happens. But up at the top, the majority of this side is, is well. So is it, is, is it good? Is it hard to fall on the back section of this? The I would say the majority of building B is already well above 136. It is. And then the majority of this site, and the majority of the, not a definite term, but the majority of this site is equal to or higher than the 140 <laughs> elevation that the funeral home's already at. 
that you know, that, um, that Matt mentioned in, in condition four there are just unit C, unit D, and, and unit E across the bottom there. And the, this the property there does drop off pretty rapidly. And I think one of the questions raised earlier is the part of his the development plan is not just driven by the fact that those are in the floodplain, but just he doesn't want to spend all the money do the whole thing at once. You can do the first half, fill it up, and then and then build the second half. But it it works with the urban process for FEMA as well. We still got some work to do from a design and architectural standpoint, so that's kind of our that's what we've got to work with. But that's, so that's, that's the buildable area. That's kind of the buildable area. You know, we kind of batch into that with the building. I should just the building. If you were to look at the topo map that's in your packet, this is an earlier version. It's just the sketch right. that shows the individual units, but those are two interior buildings. I think it's I and J are climate controls, but it's interior always. Okay. Um, but you see both of those are both current being floodplain. Um, those topo lines are very interesting. If you look at the brown shaded area, everything is in that. It's elevation 133 or lower. And then you can see how close the topo lines are as right? you start moving southward up the hill. Uh, building D, the lowest point of that building, is the current grade. Is 138 feet, and parts of that grain are above 140. So that building and the other buildings up in the southern part of the site are very much high and dry. And like the ones that are 140, they're higher than the existing thing. It's really the ones as you go to the north end, you see the topo lines getting close together. That's because the land is really starting to slope downward. And at that 133 level, you cross into the current 100-year floodplain. And those are the ones that we're concerned about. And as a point of reference, too, if you were to look over to the right at the bottom corner of the funeral home parking lot, along its property line with North Oscar Road, <coughs> that elevation is 135. Give or take a half a foot. So, as, just to give you a point of reference, as the code currently stands, the FEMA floodplain is 133. So, the lowest, the current code would allow us to build right now would be 135. So, we still got to back all that up with all the models and engineering that FEMA requires as well as the city flood work. So, conflict between the city Blood ordinances and FEMA, is that what you're saying? No, there's not a conflict. All I'm saying is that with condition number four, the only thing that's different from what's currently in place of the city ordinance and FEMA regulations is condition number four says the finished floor elevation of each building shall be at least 136 or at an elevation two foot above FEMA's 100 year flood. So I'm basically asking, you know, if we can get it to work out with FEMA, if all the calculations make sense. So if this is 133 now, it's going to be 135. 135 is low. So, so right give you either or at the greater. It's greater. greater. So what that's saying there is it's got to be 135. Yeah, yeah, okay. Or higher. Or higher. So after the comment, you like that strict. Which is greater? He's wanting to strike all of condition number four. And I understand what he's saying, and he's absolutely correct. Um, today, for any other use allowed in CC zoning, with a multitude of uses, um, their rule is 135 feet or higher for phase four elevations because of the current being a floodplain. This language you see in number four where it sets the minimum bar at 136 is a carryover from the MXD approval. That was the condition the city council put on that MXD master plan. Um, keep in mind there were some different buildings being considered. That was a development that would take several years probably to build into. Um, it is a belief not a fact, but a belief that the 133 elevation for the 100-year flip plane may be a little bit low, and that FEMA may be modifying that um, a little bit higher, but again, pure speculation. So all of that was part of the discussion five years ago. 
and the city council thought 136 was a good level to be for buildings, or in case FEMA raises the flood elevation above that, then at the time of development, then the two feet would, would occur. In this scenario, I think the applicant is um, anxious to get started. They will very, very likely pull their permit long before FEMA even <coughs> scratches their pencil on this. Um, so it's almost a boot point when it comes to that. Um, it's just the only reason staff left number four in there is because, because of the MXD approval five years ago. So at the time they get the permit of that, FEMA can say it's 135. Correct. So and right now the percent. argument really is a one foot difference. I would like to remind everyone, from, from my understanding, that flood of 2009 was finally determined, I think, to be a 500-year flood event. So it was, bad. It, was, it was higher than what we were typically designed to, but flood engineering is not an exact science. Well, we need, yeah. need, neither are those time spans. You can have one right behind exactly. yeah, it. It don't, don't mean there's going to be 500 right. years in between. <coughs> You mentioned something about number six. <laughs> I, I was just going to, on, on number six, if you look at building D, I, I know it's technically the end of building D does front, the front is along uh, North Alaska Road there, but uh, we would request that building D be removed from number six just because of the distance and the amount of, of buffering that's going to be between building D and the front. You're going to have to extend upon there, you've got that. The proposed buffer along with off the road and additional green space to be there. That because the extra distance there that's going to be, we don't feel like we need to have the break for the side. Then additionally, that's in phase two of development. So it would be at least two years before that was completed. We feel like that the buffer vegetation would grow significantly by that time. Additionally, there's a significant distance from building D to the road. Right now you have no vegetation buffer between D and the road, but maybe that's the map we're seeing here. Uh, so maybe we need to consider putting a vegetation at the end of building D. Mm -hmm. that would be I think that's a good place. No, at no. the end of building D there's nothing now. Well, it's only by the, it's not by the road, by service to your point. Right. <clears throat> putting it right there next to the building. Some additional buffering. <laughs> and, so, and commissioners, just so you know that that was not accident that staff worded it that way. Um, building D on their site plan has no buffer yard or buffering right next to it. We do recognize the street yard vegetation that's along the road, and we also recognize the distance from North Carolina Road. However, we have negated the impact of that street yard because the elevation of North Carolina Road is several feet higher. This property. Um, there's also some existing live oak trees near the ends of these buildings that may or may not be retained. Um, so that's why we worded it so it would include building D only, not building E. Um, if we were to require the similar landscaping that's next to E, F, D, and H to be on the east side of building D, then that would certainly satisfy the concern. So you're, you're saying if, if he extends the landscape procedure? Well, and it's one of those, and this is where engineering needs to chime in, it's you have a detention pond there that we have to have access to. I'm not sure if they're contemplating access through the driveway between buildings D and E or through the neighboring property. So what my thinking without asking them was they, they had left out the landscaping next to building D because they would have to provide an access path through there to maintain the pond. And I don't know what their thinking is. I know the site has not been engineered beyond its early stages. <coughs> they haven't gotten that far yet. But I think if you were to landscape the end cap of Building D to the same level as these other buildings, that would suffice. You could still leave an open gap or less dense gap between Buildings D and E. And I think that would be just fine. Well, I don't think we have to encroach upon the opening between those buildings and that driveway just at the end of the building. Right. And I'm only going to need about a 10 foot gap to get an access road down to the pond. Sure. 
Any other questions for our presenter? Thank you both very much. Very patient. Okay, I just Okay, that was very lengthy. We appreciate everybody's patience there. <clears throat> Anyone here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward this time. Anyone here wishing to speak against this request? There being none, we will close this part of the hearing. <clears throat> Commissioners, any discussion amongst ourselves on this request? Uh, one question for Matt. Uh, so you don't think it would be any hard to write it off or ruin your condition for completely? Um, I left number four in because of the city council's conditions for the MXD five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and with that in mind, I'm comfortable with it staying in there. That puts the finished four elevations one foot above the penal home parking lot low spot. Okay. Um, but Mr. Milligan is correct. If this were not a conditional use, and this were a restaurant going in, we would be looking at a finished floor 135 instead of 136. So he does have a valid argument for it, but because it's a conditional use public hearing process similar to five years ago, I left it in at 136. And also for number six, you did say that it would be agreeable to put the, the green place buffering around the end of building D. All right. Staff would be amenable to modifying the language of number six such that similar landscaping would be required on the east wall of building D as being stipulated in the site plan on the east walls of buildings E through H. Yeah. I just want to make some observations. Um, I have you know, expressed that <clears throat> during the work session. I have very serious concern with the proposed land use, the proposed use of this uh, development. And I'm going to specifically just bring to your attention some of the standards uh, <clears throat> for exercise of zoning powers that we have to consider when making any zoning decision. And that includes the existing land use pattern, the possible creation of an isolated district unrelated adjacent and nearby districts, which is what this development brings forward. Uh, <clears throat> potential impacts on the environment, and I know that engineering will be properly done, but the removal of such a green area and replacing it with basically a land of park pavement, uh, I, I see that as a concern of the environment. And uh, <clears throat> another point is whether the proposed change will be a deterrent to the value or improvement of development of adjacent or nearby property in accordance with existing regulations. So that could be probably argued that a mini warehouse facility in that area to me is not a compatible use. And specifically that the city and other agencies have been very strongly advocating gateways to the city and to the to our area. So when you step outside and you look further out, not just the adjacent property that's just directly adjacent to this, meaning the funeral home, but if you step out and you look at the surrounding area, to me there is a concern that this use does not exactly belong here. However, and I, like I said, I do appreciate you bringing these architectural, um, or these photos of what you are using in, in other facilities. But then the more I think of it, the more I get concerned because of the current zoning. So we are, right now what we are doing is deciding on a conditional use within this existing zoning already that's um, community commercial. And so I looked at what community commercial allows. And it's, so I think at this point, to me, it's what, what other uses can happen there and how much worse can this be? And whether this is a lesser impact to the community. As much as I I really I don't think this is, it belongs here. This is not the use of it that, that should be where this significant green area to be removed and this development be placed in this place. But when I look at the unfortunate 
rezoning that happened for C allowing CC in this area it concerns what else would happen. And so I just wanted, because I expressed such strong opinions here in the work session, I felt I wanted to share with my fellow commissioners my logic to where I am reaching. So despite all of what I said and all the negativity, I, I don't I think we need to make these conditions work and just Somehow, we, I would, I would, I personally would like to see what this actually is going to look like, and I would personally like to see how Unit A is actually going to look from the street as well as Unit D and E, because these are the ones that are going to be perceived um, visible from North Augusta Road. I don't know. We have a mechanism to do that, so we can see better architectural controls on this. But that's what I am concerned with, is what we are actually going to see from the right of way on this, for this development. That's all. I just wanted to show that. Commissioner? I got it. I'd like to address somebody in the audience, if I could. Sure. Mr. Music. Yes, sir. I know they didn't anybody speak against you, but state your name and who you are, please. Is that all right, Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead. My name is Casey Music, uh, 3831 North Austin Road. Uh, uh, you uh, satisfied with this situation, Mr. Music? I mean, you talked with them and discussed yes. it. Yes, sir. We work closely together. They're really trying to, as he mentioned a while ago, be a good neighbor. And uh, everything that we pretty much asked for, they really work well with us. And I mean, you know. I'm satisfied. Yeah, that's, that was my question, sir. Thank you. Now, Mr. Chairman, I often visit that place. <laughs> Here's a few of them. Just visit them. I too had some concerns about what could go in here other than this. And I'll have to admit that I've been going back and forth both ways and talking to people in the city as well as everyone on the commission and everything. And I can't see any better use right now to go in here than this. Uh, yes, I'm concerned about the pavement of the, uh, of, of the grounds around it and the green space, uh, what they're willing to put in to shield it and, and from the road and everything. And the pictures they showed us tonight of the way the office area was a good look and will possibly look. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like any other office building anywhere in town. So, I mean, you know, with everything being said, you know, uh, you know I just, I don't think it could, we could put anything in there that's going to better suit it, uh, considering the traffic and the floodplains and everything else that we have involved. Hi, right, Commissioners. I think we've all discussed this pretty good. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion on this request. Mr. Chairman, I make a recommendation that we recommend approval uh, with the removal of uh, item four and the rewording of item six to include on the building D of a green space buffer versus the brick facade. Is that understandable, Ms. Carmel? Okay, so uh, we do have a motion of Commissioner Hall. Any, sir? Any Second. discussion? Okay. <laughs> so we have no discussion. So, Ms. Carmel, we have a motion of Commissioner Hall to approve uh, the striking condition for and rewording that at condition six as you have. We have a second from Commissioner Raker. So this time we'll take a vote. All in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. And Ms. Carmella, as a 5-0, it passes. Thank you very much, everybody, for your patience on that. Very lengthy case. Well,